This video is on capital structure, one of the most important chapter of financial management and those students who are doing master of commerce, chartered accounting uh, or become you know this video is going to be very very useful to them and we'll be discussing about uh, net operating income approach, net income approach and Modi Kliani and Miller approach or propositions. So these concepts are very important always strikes in the exam so pause the video till the end and I have put in my 110% to make the concept easier and simpler to understand. Okay. And those who have not yet subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe and also share this channel and video to as many friends as you can. Okay. So let's start the video guys. This Modi Gayani Miller theorem, which is popularly known as MM theorem. Now, before we uh, move on to this theorem, uh, you know, Let's try to understand this by a simple example. Now, for example, a milk producing firm. Okay. Now, it produces milk. Fine. And now, it has two choices. One is to sell the whole milk at a particular price. The other option is that it will skim out all the cream and sell the cream at a higher price and the unskimmed milk at a lower price. Now see, uh, my point of view, what I want to say is that, uh, that you know, the company's total earning, whether it sells the whole milk at a particular price and whether it will skim out the milk and sell at a particular price and the unskim at the other price. So the earning will be the same. There will not be much difference in the earning of the company. So this is what uh, Modi Gliani and Miller put forward in their approach. So this is what I have written few key important sentences where uh, you know you can expand the theorem. The first one is the market value of a company is the present value of its future earnings. We have uh, studied in the previous video that uh, what is NPS, what is leverage and those who have not watched that please watch them because you know they are the basics of financial management, right? The second key sentence is uh, the market value of a company is independent of its capital structure. Whether the company raises funds through debt capital or equity capital, it doesn't matter. The investors are not bothered about that. The market value of the company is not affected by that. Fine. Right? The third one. It is not affected whether it raises the funds by issuing shares or bonds or reinvesting the profits. This is what Dasnoy told you. And the fourth one, capital structure is not a factor in its value. It doesn't decide the market value of the company. Right? So these four sentences are the key sentences to define the Modigliani Miller theorem. Now, this is also known as MM proposition 1. Okay. And let's see, there are few assumptions of this proposition because this proposition, uh, this theory was put forward way back in 1950s. Okay. So, it's very old theory. So, uh, actually, this theory has two parts. One is proposition 1, MM proposition 1 and MM proposition 2. So this is what I am telling you about is MM proposition 1, right? Where the, uh, where it is assumed that there are no taxes, there are no transaction costs, the capital market is perfectly competitive and the investors have uniform expectations. So this is what the first, uh, you know, the first assumptions of the Modigliani theorem proposition 1. Now, you know, uh, we can put this theorem or proposition in graphical way also. I have drawn the figure here. On the x-axis, uh, you can take debts and on the y-axis, value of the firm. That is market value of the firm. Now, as you can see here, there are two curves. One is VL, the other is VU. Okay. Now, I tell you uh, the, what VU stands for. This is the value of unlevered firm. And VL is the value of the levered firm. As you can see in this figure that VU 
this line is parallel to the trend that means it doesn't increase the market value of the unlevered firm doesn't change with the increase in debts but in the next case that is vl that is levered firm the market value of the firm increases as the debts increases so what i want to say is that financial leverage lowers the taxes and increases the market value of a company okay so we can you know get an uh, overview from this graph and based on this you can expand uh, your explanation hey friends uh, let's move on to mm proposition 2 uh, there are few uh, like you know important sentences which can define this proposition are written here like the cost of equity is directly proportional to financial leverage that means the cost of equity increases with increase in financial leverage and decreases with decrease in financial leverage so that's clear the second one is it includes corporate taxes the proposition 1 is without taxes uh, and this proposition assumes that there are taxes in this corporate world the third important sentence about this it studies the relationship between uh, now here fl is financial leverage and ror that is uh, rate of return to equity shareholders so this proposition studies the relationship between uh, the financial leverage and the rate of return to equity shareholders right and the last sentence the fourth one the rate of return increases with increase in debt capital so this last sentence is very very important which can easily define the whole of the second proposition now uh, let's represent this information in a graph because by drawing by drawing graphical representation the concept becomes more clear right so in this graph here on the x axis i have represented uh, debt by equity ratio and on the y axis i have represented cost of uh, capital now there are two curves re and r w a c c right one curve is decreasing the other is increasing right now what we can uh, what we can uh, uh, find out from this graphical representation is that first of all let's see what is this re re is a return rate of return to equity shareholders and r w a c c it stands for uh, the weighted you know w a c c stands for weighted average cost of capital okay so this weighted average rate of capital it decreases as the debt equity ratio increases right so there is an inverse relationship between w a c c and debt equity ratio whereas uh, the rate of return to equity shareholders i mean this particular curve it increases with increase in the debt equity ratio fine right? so this is what we have to define we have uh, we have to write on this proposition right operating income approach which is most popularly known as noi approach now i have written two uh, key sentences about this approach as the name implies net operating that means it is related with the income of the firm right so the value of a firm depends on operating income and the associated business risks right so this is what you have to uh, write when you are getting an explanation to write this approach then the value of the firm is not affected by change in debts if it takes further debts okay the value of the market value of the firm is not affected by those debts now you know uh, there are few assumptions of this law first there are no corporate taxes fine 
cost of debt remains constant right there is no uh, no changes in the cost of debts overall cost of capital remains constant now this third point is very important there is no change in the business risks and there are no transaction costs and a company pays 100% dividend okay friends uh, let's move on to the next approach and this is net income approach now i have uh, written few key uh, sentences for this approach a change in the financial leverage now financial leverage is the ratio of debts uh, we have discussed this in the previous videos so those who have not uh, watched my previous videos kindly uh, watch them uh, so it will affect the value of the the market value of the company so the basic difference between the operating and income approach is here the financial leverage changes the value of the company then second point is increase in leverage increases the market value of the firm and decreases the cost of capital now this is very important point this second point okay so whenever the financial leverage increases the market value of the firm also increases but the cost of capital decreases now for example suppose the debt equity ratio of a company is 1 is to 1 okay that means suppose 100 rupees is the debt capital and 100 rupees is the equity capital that means the ratio is 1 is to 1 and it changes to suppose 1 is to 4 okay so here what happens your equity ratio increases in comparison to debt ratio so it increases the value of per uh, share the value of the market value of the uh, equity share price and it has a positive impact on the company's market value there are few assumptions of this approach you must go through this it's very important now there is not much difference between the assumptions that we uh, did in the operating approach and the net income see the first point increase in debt won't affect the confidence of the investors right so you know we have a uh, we have a tendency to think that if the debt capital increases the the company is uh, not uh, properly working so that is not the case here it will not affect the investors confidence there are only two sources of finance that is debt and equity capital so that's very easy there are no transaction cost we have discussed this in the previous topic and there is a perfect competition in the capital market right there is uh, you know a perfect uh, perfect market where you know large number of buyers and sellers are there and the prices are determined by the forces of demand and supply so in the same way there is it is assumed that there is perfect competition in the capital market and all the companies have the same dividend payout ratio and that is one so these are few assumptions which you have to go through uh, that's all in this video and i hope that you have learned something out of this video because i have put in my 100% to make the concept easier and simpler to all the viewers and uh, one request from my side that uh, kindly uh, subscribe this uh, this channel and also share it to your friends on social media right so see you in the next video with another important chapter till then uh, goodbye take care best of luck